as you can tell from the cover, Miriam and Logan are fighting with each other, and wait a minute, that is not an angry fighting cover. That is a lovey-dovey cover. Could we get a new cover, please? Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. This book was written by Anne Martin. Miriam says that she and Logan have been having problems recently. First he hated her kitten, then he started a fight for no reason. Wow, talk about rewriting history to make Logan out to be a villain. Hmm, that doesn't bode well for him. Neither does the book's title. Logan asks Marianne out on a date. She says she can't go because she's babysitting. Logan is confused by this, and he calls her three times during the sitting job. He is more confused and angry when Marianne says she can't talk to him while she's babysitting. Uh, why is Logan so clueless all of a sudden? He's in the Babysitter's Club. These are basic rules he already knows. Continuity! Logan badgers Marianne into a date tomorrow. Marianne feels guilty because she wants to go out on the date, but she had to be talked into it. I understand her problem, but this came across as kind of petty. Like, the date wasn't my idea, so I don't want to do it. Sadly, we never see the big date. We get two chapters of recap instead. The following Saturday, Marianne is looking forward to staying inside and reading a book. That's when Logan shows up unannounced. He wants to take her to the park. She calmly explains that she has other plans and ha <laughs> ha no. She goes skating with Logan and has a good time until she gets cold. Then she complains nonstop. They have a minor argument and they leave in a huff. On their next date, Logan orders food for Marianne. She gets mad because that's not what she wanted to eat. He asks if she wants to change the order, but she says that's okay. She can just be passive-aggressive about it instead. Then they argue over what movie to see. Marianne votes for The Music Man, while Logan wants Halloween Part 3. I don't know what's stranger. The fact that Logan thinks they can see an R-rated movie are the fact that the only movies playing in town were made 9 and 29 years ago. Logan asks Marianne what she wants to do, and she says she wants to go home, because she would rather cancel a date than compromise on anything. If this babysitting thing doesn't work out, she has a promising career as a politician. With some prompting from her dad, Marianne decides she's been spending way too much time with Logan lately. I'm not sure how one date per week counts as spending too much time together, but the point is, she needs a break. She calls Logan and tells him they need to cool off their relationship. The next day at school, Marianne continually stresses out over Logan. He doesn't look at her, he doesn't have lunch with her, and she's so upset she cries multiple times! Logan's not talking to her anymore! This is awful! This is tragic! This is exactly what you told him to do, Marianne. Why are you so upset about this? You asked him to give you time alone, and he did it! Stop complaining! Today's plot kid is Jenny Prezioso. Her mother is having a baby soon. The Preziosos have been giving Jenny lots of presents and attention to let her know that she's still important and they still love her, even though the baby takes up most of their time. This seems like perfectly fine parenting to me, but our Babysitter's Club members disagree. Giving their daughter presents? That is bribery! They are trying to buy their daughter's love and good behavior! Oh yeah? And what do you call the kid kits, babysitters? Because those are also bribes for good behavior! You're just as bad as the Preziosos! Mallory talks to Jenny about being an older sister, Marianne and Jenny play babies together, and Jenny throws a huge tantrum at the baby shower. There's a babysitter's club meeting where Claudia hilariously complains that she can't get a boyfriend unless it's a vacation boyfriend who only lasts for one book. <laughs> Poor Claudia. She's interrupted when the phone rings. It's Logan. His family needs a babysitter for Valentine's Day. The job turns out to be a surprise date! Logan shows up in a tuxedo, and he treats Marianne to a fancy dinner, complete with presents. It's romantic, but in case you haven't figured it out yet, Marianne is determined to hate Logan in this book, so she gets mad at him for not consulting her about the surprise date ahead of time. Jenny's baby sister is born, and she's so beautiful, Jenny instantly falls in love with her, which means the two sisters will never have any problems ever again. As a parent, can I just say... <laughs> <sighs> the 
the baby love makes Marianne realize that true love involves understanding, but Logan is an understanding of her, so maybe he doesn't love her. She stands up for herself and criticizes Logan to his face at great length, then she breaks up with him forever. In this case, forever means until book 46. The end. Post-book follow-up. Maybe it's because I'm a guy, but I feel compelled to take Logan's side in the relationship battle. Marianne is extremely petty and inconsistent throughout the entire book. The ending scene spells it out best. Why wasn't he getting the message? Oh, because I wasn't talking. Well, I thought my actions were enough, but maybe not. After all, Logan couldn't read my thoughts. That was her issue the entire book. She gets mad at Logan for not doing what she wants, but she never tells him what she wants. She expects him to know what she wants without being told every single second of every single day. She also complains about problems without trying to solve them. Like when she gets mad at Logan for planning a bad date, while never once planning any dates herself. In Marianne's defense, Logan is also inconsistent. He never acted like this in any of the previous books. CONTINUITY! Their relationship is almost the total opposite of what it was in Super Special 3, when they loved each other so much they couldn't stand to be apart for more than two minutes. Logan goes from being the perfect boyfriend to being a total jerk. I suspect that Logan's personality changed so drastically in order to absolve Marianne of any guilt for dumping him in the final chapter. That's a shame. Marianne raises some legitimate issues about herself, Logan, and their relationship. This book could have taken a serious look at things, like the divorce book. But instead, the book takes the easy way out and gives us, Logan is a jerk now, so Marianne dumps him. The only other thing I have to note is that Chapter 5 is a blatant advertisement for little sister number 15, Karen's in Love. Karen and Christy discuss the plot of that book in some detail. It, it was it's kind of ugh. Overall, this book feels important. The super couple of the series just broke up! This is huge! But I didn't like this book. Logan becomes a jerk, and Marianne complains constantly. They both came across as bad people, and it's probably for the best that they're not dating anymore. I get Babysitter's Club number 41, Marianne vs. Logan, a 3 out of 10.